Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. And right as it is about to crack morning here, it's time to take that forget elixir. Now, last night I did get a double clothing pocket mod crafted because we found that book a couple of days ago, and I did get that uh, tier five, quality five pipe rifle crafted so we can hang on to that in the future. But let's suck this down and um, prepare to fight because it seems to draw in the attention of all the surrounding zombies. Okay, so today is finally, finally strength day. So in a second here, I'm gonna pump some points. Ooh, wow, nice. Maybe we don't need any points in this sledgehammers. Oh uh, yes, of course we do. Anyway, let's have a look at those points. Okay, so we only need strength level five to get Boulder Buster and that'll be crafting quality five tools. So that's priority number one. And then two into Master Chef. And I suppose that'll be three, wow, into Sexy T-Rex and the remainder into Skull Crusher. Wow, that feels good. I like that a lot. Could have done Mother Load there, but I've done some testing in the past that compares taking points into Minor 69er versus Mother Load. And in that testing, it was more beneficial. You get more resources per hour if you just go into um, Minor 69er because you basically you get that bonus for breaking the block and therefore you can get that bonus more often if you can break the tools, uh, break the blocks faster with better tools and better damage to blocks. Okay, so that opens up two more spots in the backpack. And yes, we are pr pretty much chronically hungry and in need of first aid, so boiled meat it is. First up, we'll do the bacon and eggs though, get rid of all the eggs, and I thought I would be able to get some meat stew. What's holding me back here? Boiled water. And we can get one meat stew. That's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. All right, so positively, the most important thing to do today is going to be harvesting resources and also probably just getting like a couple stone axes crafted. So in case I die and I lose one, I'll still have another tier five somewhere else. I'll get another shovel crafted. Or actually, no, I have the steel shovel. Where the hell did that go? I've lost my steel shovel. I think I left it in the... Uh, in Bobby's dumpster out there, so that's unfortunate, but uh, I can craft a new one here in a second. We gotta get some stone. All right, well, let's hit the ground and we gotta chop down a bunch of trees to start off with. Alright my friends, this is the test here. Can we take out a horde with a strength build? Although this definitely doesn't look like the caliber of horde that we're used to. Here, let's see if we have any like residual rifle skills left over from Perception Day. Certainly not. Okay, it does appear as though many of them are just kind of running straight on through, which is ideal. We can probably just loose a couple of arrows and draw the rest over. Speaking of, see if we can get some extra arrows crafted while we're waiting for these guys to wander over. Too easy. Strength is just so OP, man. It's it's really not even funny how much, how much easier it is to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with groups of zombies with a strength build versus any other build. The sheer DPS and knockdown power of strength weapons is just, it outclasses everything else. Look at that, it just doesn't compare. You could knock any zombie right flat on their ass. All right, so from here, I think I'm just gonna gather up a little bit more in terms of resources, and then we'll head back and begin to upgrade the base a little bit. Also, I think I have plenty of clay back at the base, but uh, I might also dig up a little bit more so that we can just ensure that we have enough cobblestone. All right, I just replanted a whole bunch of seedlings. You can kind of see them scattered around here. An airdrop did just arrive, and it landed right there. That is our second airdrop, the first one being right up there. Ooh, kind of close to that tier two fetch. So probably after the horde, that'll be our route for tomorrow to go and collect up all those airdrops and then hit that quest. For now though, we don't have time for that. We have preparations to make here at the base. So let's head over and start doing some upgrades and probably take care of some of the wasteland wanderers while we're at it. Get the hell out of here. All right, so first step is going to be the pillars. Now this is not going to be a 
pillar column system that's like permanently here to support the base. This is just here for tonight. Hopefully the zombies will not target these types of things. Oh, there's a skill point right there. Let's uh, immediately check on that. You know what? Let's go into heavy armor. I just looking at it. We should be able to craft enough heavy armor to at least, you know, like cover the exposed parts of the body. That would be currently just the chest. But I, I'm trying to get in the habit of wearing um, armor, heavy armor at Horde Night because you don't need the mobility quite so much. All right, so I'm just gonna get these upgraded. Eventually, this is going, going to be a wall, and eventually, this is going to be, whoops, uh oh, spider, a um, garage door right there. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. Nope, oh, maybe he will be. Oh, <laughs> nice jump there, buddy. I wanna work on that. All right, here we go. Okay, that does it for the first half of construction, the construction phase. Let's just, oh man, I gotta get some jars crafted. That's like really holding us back right now is the murky water, boiled water situation. And just give me like a bunch of chests. We gotta start getting stuff organized and damn, watch out for that friggin' cop over there. The cop could spit at us and I'm pretty sure that cop spit causes fire in this, uh, with all the mods we have activated right now. All right, just dump these down anywhere. Not too concerned about it right now, but just make sure I don't pull these frames up and send the contents of the chest crashing down to the bottom. Yep, I, I found my shovel and my wrench and my pistol. Those were just hanging out in the bicycle, but yeah, that jeez, crap. It's so much stuff in the inventory. All right, so give me a second to get the stuff organized. All right, that'll do for now and definitely gonna get some coffee crafted for tonight. Four of those, and I think probably the rest is going into... Ooh, wait, vegetable stew. We could make one of those and then, uh, oh, that's it, I guess. Okay, so, um, no, 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 instead of that, then meat stew. Meat stew's gonna be much better for you. And then, yeah, after that, all the boiled meat. Lots and lots of that stuff. And so I've decided that uh, we're gonna be carrying, it, well, on strength day at least, if we're doing sledgehammers, I would like to get into the habit of carrying the iron sledge and the stone sledge, because the stone sledge is just such a lower stamina cost, and so if you're in a bind and you just want to, like, finish someone off or get that sweet knockdown from the sledgehammers. Better to switch over to the stone sledge. There's another gamer, not only 2-5, that uses that strategy a lot. It seems to work very well for him, so I want to give it a whirl. All right, just get these fully upgraded, and I'm not too concerned about zombies breaking in from the sides here. It's never been an issue on this sort of fighting position design in the past. It, I'm not completely sold on this being the base design. Uh, or the fighting position design for this playthrough. It's just something I had to throw together just to get like the first week out of the way. And then uh, we'll we'll let this evolve and sort of make modifications as we need to as we go. So eventually I envisioned there being electric fences like that right there perhaps and stringing those over to electric fences that'll be here, here, and here. And then same thing on this side. Whoop, getting some more frames like that and then uh, same thing over here we would just eventually fill this in in fact if we have to fight over here this needs to be upgraded yeah and so well i'm not sure i think it was uh right in this spot here so just fill this in real quickly so we can see what it's going to look like okay so yes want to line it up perfectly from here so those three electric fence posts are going to be like this and you can see if i can just aim Okay, so it's one, two, three. That one there, the third one on the left, is gonna line up with the third one on the left here. And so it's gonna run right directly over where that hatch block is gonna be. And then another one here to the middle one, and then the far right one here to the far right one there. So it'll kind of string diagonally across the base, and then there will be dart traps right here. So we'll line them right up with the dart traps all the way down, probably top and bottom. And like I said in the last episode, I think it was, there's going to be just a gauntlet of blade traps for them to run through. So it should be a pretty nice trap base. And what I will eventually do is um, 
Well, it, what will happen is I think these will be the receiving fence posts. And so if uh, there are repairs that need to be made, I can just run over here during the Horde Night and like bang, 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 upgrade them all and then come right back over here. Don't have to fuss about fences breaking in the middle of the night and not being able to repair them. And then I'm also envisioning a block system here. Like we could probably use the railing block. So let's just throw a couple of these in. Kind of like this here so that I could come through with a nail gun or whatever and upgrade the um, uh, blade traps that get degraded as time goes by. But the problem with this is going to be that if cops come up the ramp there, they'll be able to see me and they'll start spitting at me, which could ruin many parts of the base. So I think there will be a sort of blockade wall right there so that if I'm just here at the fighting position, they would have to like turn the corner to come and see me. And then if they spit at me from right there, not as big of a deal as if they were spitting at me from way over there. Okay, it is getting toward that time. Let's make sure we have the inventory all set up and eat some food, drink some water, get prepared. I didn't get everything upgraded that I would have liked to have gotten upgraded, but it's gonna probably have to do at this point. See, I don't think these are gonna really take any damage, so they're probably good. I think I'll probably replace this with a door. I thought it'd be cool to use the hatches for once, but I think I'll have issues. My, my idea was that I'd be able to kind of reach from here and open and close it. But um, I think that far one over there is too far away. I haven't been able to actually see it from here. So that could present itself as an issue. We'll have to see how it goes tonight. So one thing you can do if you want to save some time on the campfire and the forge and stuff like that is you craft up some of these logs. And a log takes, I think it's, what, what was it, eight? It takes eight wood or ten wood. And it burns for the same amount of time as 10 wooden planks, but it gives you the added benefit of just not having to click quite so much. So a little tip for you there. You can also use coal in the fire, which uh, may or may not be something you want to do as well. But here, let's just uh, put some iron in there for now. I usually use the output to kind of store some stuff too. It's, it's fine to just leave some stuff in there in storage. Yeah, we'll let that burn all night long. We'll smelt some of that iron in there so that really we can make nails. Nails and then forged iron so that we can get a proper storage system set up. But that's probably a task for next week. All right, I just got a duct tape crafted and I should be able to get that scrap chest armor done now. There it is. Slap that on and we should be fully armored now. A mixture of heavy and light armor. Ooh, no hood. Uh, do I have... Yes, I made an extra glue so I can make an extra tape so that I can make an extra scrap helmet. Good, that came through. Set that up, bring the frames down, and that should do it. Well, the hour is late and our first horde approaches, so it is time to lock and load. My friends, the Horde is almost upon us. Okay, so far so good here. We Look, we got burned zombies. I've added them into the hordes now just for a little extra flavor. It'll be really nice once we get the barrel ones because they they change their, uh, they, they light up, they're on fire. Okay, stamina already an issue. So we're gonna stack up three coffees. All consumables will stack three times. So it's safe to drink three in a row. All right, let's do this. Oh crap, no oh, Bo. Why do you gotta, why do you gotta be like this Bo? Here, get out of here. All right, check the repair situation. Not too bad. I should have plenty of repair materials for tonight. Yeah, see that knockdown? Even with a stone sledgehammer, it's freaking awesome. Oh no, bubbles. No. Oh, the bubbles. You set the base on fire. Oh crap. Get the fire extinguisher. Okay. Uh, was that it for the fire? I feel like there's probably more stuff on fire. Just double check everything. Friggin' bubbles. Get back, get back. I'm pissed off now. Oh, 
Oh boy, they're yep, they're messing stuff up here. Um, repair that, and geez, it takes forever for the stamina bar to replenish. It looks like we're getting about maybe eight or so zombies at a time, which is not too bad. We can live with that. Oh, okay, no, no. What are you doing? Get out of here! Okay, I got a, a loot bag right in front of my head, so I think I have to um, just go ahead and take that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to make sure that I'm in the right biome, so I'm going to lean toward the um, the wasteland biome as much as I can there. Oh, crap. Getting hit left and right here. Good thing I have some boiled meat. We can kind of drink that or eat it or whatever you do with boiled meat to get some hit points back. There. Take a little bit of a break here for some boiled meat. 15 hit points per, so I'll take two of them. Ooh, take that. Yeah, I'm feeling like the sledgehammer, the stone sledgehammer is working just fine for our purposes here tonight. Okay, a little, little bit of a lull here. We'll repair this up. I do feel as though some of them are have fallen down and are beating on the base a little bit, and that's fine. We should have plenty of redundant pillars. Uh, that's inevitable. Zombies are going to fall down and enter into rage mode here and there. Yeah, see, I just knocked a whole bunch down, so I'm fully anticipating they're going to start beating on some pillars down there. <laughs> if, if pieces of the base start collapsing, we'll know exactly what's going on. All right, we're uh, at midnight now, which i it's a little bit longer than I thought this horde was going to go for, but it is what it is, I guess. Definitely feeling like this is a high-volume horde. I haven't changed the volume of the horde at all. It's more the contents of the horde. And we shouldn't really be noticing that until much later game stages, like, you know, 70, 80 game stage or so. I think we're on the tail end of it here. Yep, that's uh, all all quiet, almost all quiet. One more, it looks like. Where are ya? Take that. Not quite enough to kill him. There we go. Okay, assessing for damage here. Doesn't look like uh, much damage at all was taken. Oh, here we go. A couple pillars over here. Yep, just uh, plug that right back up. No big deal. Like it never even happened. Right there. Ah, another one here. Okay, that's not too bad. They knocked out two blocks. Two blocks all night long. I'd say that's a great success. And we have, it looks like two loot bags for our effort, plus the one that we picked up before. And make sure that we are in the wasteland portion. And loot these up. Ooh, some forged steel. Not too bad. And some 9 mil and some shaman coffee. We couldn't really ask for much more than that, I suppose, out of a loot bag. Right on. So we avoided catastrophic failure in the in the fire from bubbles. <laughs> uh, to be determined, I guess, you can turn off like whether or not cop spit and uh, vomit from vultures and from bubbles will start fires or not. I'm not decided on whether I will turn that off or not. I think it's kind of exciting to have that extra element that they could set stuff on fire at any time. And eventually this horde base will be completely constructed out of cobble, at least if not concrete or steel in the future. So it shouldn't be much of a problem here, but uh, we'll see. And we'll always just have a fire extinguisher on us when we're around the base so that if something does catch on fire, we can quickly put it right out. So anyway, Tim Cam, great job tonight. Good job on the filming. I'm sure that'll come out just great later on. You can take a break, my friend, and we will pick things up a little bit later on this morning. All right, welcome back, everyone. I've spent the remainder of the night there just doing some, like, putting the floor in here and doing organization of the inventory. It's very important to me to have a very organized inventory, and I usually break it out into an 8 to 10 chest system, so... Uh, first things first this morning, I'm starting to get the jitters, so let's suck down a Grampus Forget Elixir and hope that there's no zombies nearby. I haven't heard any for a little while, and so I'm not sure if they've spawned in yet or not. But, let's see, what is today anyway? It is Fortitude Day. Nice. So, we're gonna have to go into the Brawler. Ooh, potentially we could put some points into Machine Gun and then craft ourselves a better pipe machine gun. That's a possibility anyway. And alternatively, we could maybe do... Living off the land, maybe? And, uh, start up a garden? Hmm. What do I have for, like, crops and stuff? I have enough to make two corn seeds, and... That is pretty much it. Ooh, okay. So we'll need to... Man, you gotta really plan ahead. So next, next Fortitude Day will be the day to start the garden, then. We'll just try to, uh, save as many plants and things like that as we can. Alright, so that's what I've done. Seven into Fortitude, four Machine Gunner, three Brawler, two Pain Tolerance, two Iron Gut... And I don't think that means I can make a pipe machine gun right now. We are 
uh, actually not broadcasting any of these new storages. Storage broadcast mod is really just the best thing that's ever happened to Seven Days. I really hope they include that in the final version of Seven Days to Die, Vanilla. So, hold on one second here. Let's turn the fire on and see if I could make the six glue that I need. Oh, definitely. I need to just work on some of that for a little bit. Get the rest of the empty jars out of here, followed by some nails. Ooh, not that many. I think we need 10 per storage box, so let's just get like 120 for now, so we'll have plenty. And then after that, we can start rolling on forged iron. And I will grab down that really nice set of tier 3 Nux that we found a couple days ago. That'll be our primary weapon for today. And a new pipe machine gun coming up. Bring that down to the number 3 emergency slot. And I think, whoa, look at the reload speed on that. Nice. All right, I think we're ready to roll out. Who's our first customer today? It's uh, Mo. Mo, come on over here, Mo. Ooh, a one, two, three punch. Nice. Okay, where's my bike? Right here. And uh, I think we have a quest already, so I will meet you over there. But before we do, I'm going to stop by and grab this... Oh, geez, a bear. Of course, a bear spawned right next to it. My goodness. And Bubbles tracking me down from behind. Okay, multiple zombies, including a cop there as well. You think we just ride up and grab it and then get the hell out of there or what? This is ultra risky, but we gotta do what we gotta do here. Okay, uh, park the bike here and we're just gonna maneuver on foot. Just duck and dodge and dodge and move and maneuver and grab and move. Oh, is that like 50 lockpicks? Holy cow, that's good. And an antibiotic. Okay, on to the next airdrop. Oh my god, you see that? My front tire just smashed a cinder block. <laughs> okay, yep, we're out of here. Thank goodness. All right, here we are pulling up on the spot here next to this uh, that fancy farm POI. That I think this is the one that has the, the landmine situation. <laughs> anyway, see what's in here. And we've got, ooh, 500 wooden cubes and two more antibiotics. That's an interesting find. That will certainly help with base construction as well. Ooh, I'm hungry. Uh, we've got boiled meat for that, though. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to push through all that boiled meat very quickly, so we'll still be on the lookout for vending machines and things like that so that we can continue to keep the food supply up. And it's getting to the point where, like, we should start probably saving canned goods because we could probably take three or four points into the cooking perk and then get, like, the fancy meals, right? Like spaghetti or fish tacos or things like that. Ooh, look, good sledgehammer in there. Who's over here? Whoa, no punching allowed. Oh, well, I'm allowed to punch, not you. Get out of here. Oh, we're doing this farm. Oh boy, this is the one with the two spiders in it, guaranteed. Alrighty, well, we'll get some corn out of it at least. In fact, I'm gonna double dip that corn because we need to make corn seeds for the next Fortitude Day. I think that'll do it. Let's go hit the quest and do it all over again. Snap that and oh, look at that, fresh corn. All right, I think we're good to go. Although I am sort of inclined to, I might as well grab this stuff up too, but we need a plan in case a wandering horde shows up. We need to kind of think that through every time we get to a POI or go inside a building. Like, what are we gonna do if 30 zombies show up outside? Because the wandering hordes can be like upwards of 40 zombies, which is pretty crazy now that I think about it. I don't know what I was thinking. So let's maybe uh, just make a couple of little things that we can do maybe, like, you know, jump up here and get on the rooftop. Okay, so that'll work on this side. And then if we're stuck on the other side, we'll have another sort of ladder to get up here, just like that. And there should be plenty of like, uh, you know, there's ways inside that you can kind of get up above the, where the zombies can get to you from. So without further ado, let's get our ass in here and hope for the best. Close the door behind us. Oh, we got a snake. Get out of here, boat. I'm in a fist fight with a snake. Yep, I'll definitely be taking that uh, snake skin as well. All right, don't, yeah, boars spawn in here sometimes. Forgot about that part. Oh, geez. Okay, so hopefully I get the kill here. Nope, of course I don't. Well, we'll have to punch him out then. Oh, no. Yep, did not work. Careful with those guys. One more zombie down there. I'm going to send one for him. There we go. Where is he going? Oh, goodbye. Here, take this guy out while we're waiting. Ooh, these guys are tough. No. Ow. Holy crap. I'm going to die to a boar today.
All right, my friends, that is it for this place. I've broken down just about everything. Ooh, I, I never noticed that weapons bag down there before. We'll have to grab that on the way out of here. I wonder if that's new. This uh, POI got updated a little after um, Alpha 19 Experimental came out, or Alpha 20 Experimental came out. So there are, probably are some new things to find around here. Hey, that's a nice fire axe there. I got a lot of materials out of here too. Ooh, lucky goggles, nice. Perfect timing for that too. And it's the good ones, the plus fives. These come in plus three, four, and five variants. And that is a really good five. My only set of eyewear now, so we don't have to bother taking them off and putting them back on again. And in the main chest here, ooh, a hobo stew. That is a good prize there and a full auto mod. Very nice. Okay, well, this is easy enough to get right here. What do we get for this? Ooh, Bunker Buster mod. Not too bad. I'll put that right on my axe. And, oh, almost didn't make that jump. Luckily, there's a hay bale there. We come straight up here, run across there, let it collapse, and head down here for the secret stash. Hit the hay bale with the shovel to get a one-shot kill on it, and open this up. Hidden stash, baby, what do we got? Oh my goodness, that is a lot of stuff there. Lever, lever action rifle schematic. Not too bad, and take the rest. Luckily it's stacked, so I can squish it all in my backpack. Hey, what's way up here? Is there anything secret up here? I don't- oh, yeah, I got a sports bag. Sometimes this has good stuff in it, like uh, steel knuckle parts. Definitely be taking those. I think, though, I could probably scrap those bullet casings. We could just uh, turn that into brass and then turn it back into bullet casings again in the future if we have to. And I think that's it for this place. So I will meet you back at Trader Bob's. We'll see what we get for a reward for all this. All right, Bobby, what do you got today? Hey, hang on, check the vending machine first and foremost. Nope, can't do that, don't have any money on me. Well, we'll get some money off of Bob here, and I'll grab the wrench for sure, because I already have a good pair of boots, and I want the extra wrench to make the workbench at some point. And we'll take a job for tomorrow. Fetch and clear to the southeast, that's pretty close by, or we've got the east right here. What is that one, house modern number three? Sure, we'll take that. Today was Trader Restock Day, so I might as well take a peek here. And just got a level up there as well. No, I wouldn't say that he has anything that is particularly useful to me, except for he's got a Night Stalker book and a Sniper book, neither of which I can afford at the moment. So, oh, that Grave Digger mod would be kind of nice to have as well. But uh, anyway, we can't afford anything. It's just good to know what he has so we can return for whatever else tomorrow. But let's get the Sugar Butts Eye Candy lamb rations peas and that'll do it we'll get everything out of bobby's dumpster here that we possibly can and haul it all back home so while i'm making the journey back i just wanted to take a quick moment to just let you guys know that i appreciate the support so far on this series i do hope that you all are enjoying it so far i know i am this is a very refreshing play style for me and i was eager to get back to vanilla and i understand that a lot of people wanted me to continue with the modded playthroughs uh, more than half of the channel subscribers came in the period between the beginning of Darkness Falls and the end of Undead Legacy, which spanned a period of about six months. And so a lot of people are only accustomed to me doing a modded playthrough. And um, I do understand that. Seven Days to Die has gotten a little bit dry with age and the updates are slow, but... Um, I did want to just get away from the total overhaul, the total conversion mods for just a little bit. I have an excellent series concept that I am saving for Alpha 21, so I'm really hoping that that drops sometime in the next uh, six months would be perfect for me. I mean, the sooner the better, really. In terms of other channel goings on, I'm actually branching out into some other games. I'm not really committing to any single game to like, let's, you know, sit down and do a 20 episode series because I think that's ultimately detrimental to the health of the channel to do long series content. So I've been saying it for a long time. I want to do more one-off style content where it's just one video in one game and then done and move on to the next one. So I hope you guys have noticed that that's been sprinkled into the channel a little bit here and there. And I do hope that you enjoy that because there's more of it to come. I'm really enjoying it. It's refreshing for me. I'm really waiting for a lot of the newer games to come out. There have been so many game delays this year because, well, for one, Unreal Engine 5 is coming out and I think a lot of games delay laid their release in order to update to that, like for example, Sons of the Forest and Nightingale, which were both slated for 2022 releases and now have been pushed to early 2023. And those are two games that I do in fact want to make like big staple games on the channel, like ones where I would do a prolonged series. 
But ultimately, I'm always looking for more suggestions on what I can bring to the channel. So if you have any games that you're playing or that you have your eyes on, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know so that I can kind of put that on my radar. Pretty much everything's on the table. I think this channel will mainly focus on survival type games, but I might branch out to some things. For example, Manor Lords is an upcoming game that I'm really looking into maybe doing a couple of videos on that for the channel. It's more of like a grand strategy RTS kind of top down game, but I think there are some sort of survival elements where you have to like keep your dynasty alive or something. Anyway, it looks like a really fun game and I do like kind of RTS Total War style games. So maybe we'll dabble in that a little bit, but I'm probably just rambling at this point. Probably most of this will just get edited out of the video entirely. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's head back into our character and pick things back up at the base. Phew, okay, for home sweet home and luckily just in time because it just ticked nightfall and I can like just feel the presence of zombies spawning in all around me. All right, let me get this stuff rel, whoops. Well, I was going to say relatively organized, but I just mucked it all up. All right, give me a minute to fix all this. All right, that's it. Everything is put away. I actually should have my nails completed and together with the wood in my inventory, should be able to make some writable storage boxes. Very nice. Let's get, uh, let's just get eight of those to start with. And I'm going to have to figure out a way to set up the crafting stations in a sort of a layout for all of the Get the workbenches and the forges and the campfire and the chem stations and all that stuff. I'll probably spend some of the night tonight, uh, let's see, 1800 wood. Well, that's not going to be as many block upgrades as I would like, but I'd like to get the floor at least done so that we don't accidentally pull a block and fall through, right? And then I'll have to start thinking about, um, like, interior design for this place. In fact, this, uh, this crafting station or this crafting wing or area looks just way too big so I might need to kind of rethink the design here before we get too much further but anyway my friends and fellow survivors I think we have to call it a night Hey everyone, my name is Temreki, and I just wanted to say thank you for watching, for leaving a like, and most of all, thank you to the long list of amazing supporters that you see here. I hope this video has earned your subscription, and I can't wait to show you the next one. Best wishes to all, and goodbye.